Hello guys, today we're going to be beginning Unit 5, Operations Management of IB Business Management. So let us begin. This is personally my least favorite unit, but we're going to begin with it. So um, what are operations? So Unit 5.1. So what's an operation? Operations are fundamental activities of an organization, meaning that their organization needs to undergo these specific steps, these specific actions, which are operations in order to survive, in order to make sure all its activities are getting done with. So basically, um, it's it basically explains what the organization does and delivers, whether it's goods or services. Again, because we know that there's many different sectors. We have the primary sector, which is like mining, extracting. We have the secondary sector. We have the tertiary sector. Tertiary sectors like services, for example, hairdressers, restaurants. We have quaternary sector, which is like information. So when like you provide information, the business provides information. So we have different sectors. We have goods, we have services, we have different types of services. So this is how the like depending on what the business provides, they have different operations. Um, it's really dependent. You can have a business that provides a um cleaning services. Um, so their operations be completely different from a um, let's say business which manufactures copybooks. So they'd have completely different operations, um, whether it comes to recruitment and uh, to fixed costs, um, to ordering and delivering materials. So it really is um, completely dependent. Um, now we have operations management the art of managing production to get the best uh, the best end product so basically um the operations management is how well a business really has to handle its operations whether um it, it has to do with being fast being efficient being productive it's also linked to a certain extent with its hr because its hr is operating its operations again everything is interconnected so organi uh, organizing different elements and stages of the production process whether like i'm going to continue with the um like manufacturing of cop of copybook services whether it's how fast these copy books are produced, what kind of copy books or like what kind of material are producing these copy books, um, how they're being stored in the warehouses, etc. From selecting the raw material. So again, how much the business is willing to pay for the raw material, um, the, uh, whether it's high end quality, whether it's low end quality and the equipment. So how much they're investing in these machines, if these machines are new technology, if they're old technology, it's all dependent on that to ensuring the finished product is up to standard. Okay, so like I said, we have different sectors. So we have the mining or harvesting in the primary sector. So it's like the raw material. Then we have the secondary sector, industrial manufacturing, whether they're like manufacturing, let's say tables, manufacturing chairs, manufacturing copy books, like I said, or tertiary, which is like, I'm giving you an example, open heart surgery, it's like services. And then quaternary sectors like business consultancy. So it's like information. Um, then you have the role of operations manager. So in the prime, uh, so the operations manager has direct experience of the economies of scale, diseconomies of scale. So basically, I'm going to explain what the economies of scale, diseconomies of scale. If you need to revise them, go to section one point five in unit one. But basically, economies of scale is when you when a business begins producing at a higher rate, uh, which is really significant to the point where each unit costs less. So let's say the copybook um, business um, was once producing 10,000 units and each unit, let's say, cost 50 cents. Well, now that it's producing 100,000, each unit is going to cost 30 cents. Okay, so this is just an example. This economies of scale is the exact opposite of economies of scale. Basically, when they start producing more, but each unit is going to cost more. Now, this is, you don't really have, it, it, it. you do have to know in the IB business management syllabus, you do have to know this as a definition. However, this really has to do with marginal utility and whatnot, ID economics. But just know that it's the opposite of economies of scale. I don't think they're going to really get into it that much. Uh, of scale and can identify some strength and weaknesses of the organization other departments would not know about. So they basically Basically, really study and extract the operations management, how the operation is going from the point where they're collecting the raw material to manufacture the copy books to the point where these manufacture these copy books are entering the retail shops. Okay, so they need to basically follow it step by step and seeing where their inefficiencies are at and the cost of the raw material, whether they're just like the, the, the production and storage of these material, whether they're just being produced and stored and then the business is paying on the storage or whether they're directly being um, sold. So they just need to really look at these logistics. The operations management 
manager could suggest which forms of non-financial reward may be suitable for the organization. So again, employees generally have financial and non-financial reward. So financial reward is basically um, stuff they can touch, stuff that are sensible, like money, for example, whether it's um, something like um, maybe um, they can get offered a company car, maybe they can get offered um, some sort of bonus, but something basically like, the, like they can touch it, something that's costs money something that has value whereas non-financial it can be like um a promotion a senior position something else you know um the operations manager may know which production product production costs could be cut again we have variable and fixed costs we need to know for example if they're if they're like electricity bills could be decreased maybe their utility bills such as electricity and water bills they can like find certain costs that can be decreased in order to make the business more productive and in order to in decrease a variable or fixed costs once the to that that will so basically once fixed cost uh, or variable cost decrease or both, and this will lead to a decrease in total cost. A decrease in total cost will lead to an increase in profit. So basically, I'm just going to write this. Decrease in costs, whether fixed or variable, leads to an increase in profit since profit equals total no total revenue minus total costs keep in mind total costs equals variable plus fixed costs okay so once any of these two decrease this will decrease so this will increase, okay? So I hope you got my idea. The operations manager can advise which product extensions can be easily implemented. So also they're, they're aware of these, the production process and every single process that, every single operation technically that leads to the production of this good or service and they will be able to know all the logistics behind it. So now factors to take into account. Um. So this is during, like, these are just factors during operation. So we have um, economic factors. You have, so basically economic factors, what are they? They refer to the fact that budgets may, must be respected. So basically, like I said, budgets, they're like amounts of certain amounts of money that the business are able to spend. For example, the copybook business is allowed to spend, let's say, 100,000 on the machines made to produce the copybook. So they need to follow these budgets because the business, uh, because again, um, one of the departments of a business is the financial department, department, right? So this financial department has certain finances that it has to respect, has to follow. Wastage must be kept to a minimum, again, because they need to make sure they're productive as possible and further savings should be made. So costs should be minimal. They should cut costs as much as possible because once co costs are cut, profit will increase, okay? Economic sustainability. They need to use available resources and raw material to their best advantage, okay? So basically, they need to make sure that they're basically following if you're an economic student you don't need to do this for business but if you're an economic student it's allocated efficiency okay you need to make sure that they're using their machines up to the best capability okay and keep keep in mind i'm just remembering this now because in ib bass paper they did ask about let's say the disadvantage of high capacity utilization so i always remember that when you're writing an answer that's four points or more so this answer is worth four marks or more what you need to do is that you need to make sure that you write both perspectives because in, in IB you need to know how to evaluate your policies you need to know both perspectives so advantages and disadvantages advantages to using your, to your resources as much as possible is that you're using them as much as possible you're being um resourceful you're being productive and you're basically ensuring that you make as much revenue as possible um, but at the same time this is like maybe tiring your workers this may be draining to your machinery so just keep that in mind Social sustainability, they need to take human factors into accountability, both internally, so workers and their well-being, and externally customers and community when making business decisions. So again, you have to keep that in mind. And ecological sustainability, this has to do with the envir our environment. So basically, you have to take the environment into account when um when making business decisions. So uh, business decisions, for for example, if this um like this, let's say copybook business um is using non-recyclable paper. Or um yeah so basically they're not taking the um like the 
environment into consideration because this is harming the environment because this, these papers are non-recyclable. So this is very harmful and they're cutting a lot of trees in order to produce this paper. So this is really bad for the environment. So it's really negative ecologically. So this may affect the business's image, this their brand reputation. So again, keywords, we have brand reputation. So when you talk about ecological sustainability, always keep it in mind, keywords, brand reputation, and brand image. These are very, very, very important words you need to talk about when you're talking about ecological sustainability. Then you have the triple bottom line. Um, this is a, bus a business tool. It's actually technically not a tool, um, but you can use it in your IA, but keep in mind, it's actually not a tool. I don't know why I said that. But basically, um, it takes into consideration social, economic, and ecological um, factors. So we talked about social. Social is basically people. Internal is its employees. External is basically customers, the community, the, the business it belongs to. Economic is basically when it comes to finances, um, money, and ecological is the environment. Um, stresses, so this, the triple bottom line, just on the fact that businesses should not only consider financial aspects, but also the well-being of its local community and natural environment. Again, this is very important. This is actually so shown through CSR. So if you don't know what CSR is, um, go back to section 1.3. But basically, it just talks about how the business doesn't only prioritize making its revenues and profits, but also prioritizes the um, um well-being of uh, like the social and environmental well-being of the society it belongs to, the community it belongs to. So this is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please comment down below. And um, if you want IB business management resources, then you can join my Google Classroom in the link below. And I do offer private tutoring. Um, so you can also um, email me. My email will be down below for a private tutoring session. Or if you want any help, then I'm always willing to help. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Please subscribe and like my videos so I can continue making more of these videos. Bye-bye.